What do we have here? We have what looks like a, a Catalan opening, but in fact it was some uh, some Dutch. Dutch Catalan. Dutch Catalan, yes, uh, well known Dutch Catalan, and uh, I think that's what she played yesterday as well. So she won her first game as white, and then the second one she needed a draw and she played this this opening. Which is not yeah. the kind of an opening that you choose when you need a draw. Right, right. Doesn't have the most drawish reputation. Okay, so she goes with the Swiddler approach. Whenever you need a draw, you need to go and fight. And this is the okay. only way you can get a draw. Makes or, sense, like, but uh, didn't really work out for her yesterday. So <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't that time, but maybe today it will. Well, today she doesn't have the pressure of a uh, must uh, uh, draw situation. Yes, yeah, so she's just playing. And in fact, this is the exact same position we had yesterday, I believe. Uh, except that in that game, I think White played knight d2 and then put the second knight on f3. Uh, the bishop came to f4 and uh, White got a very nice position. This time she decided to take on d5, which is not very standard, but maybe, yeah, maybe this is knight c4 idea actually. It's something what she had prepared for this game. All oh, right, this is a very common move in such kind of positions where you have this pin and the pawn cannot take because uh, there is the bishop saying hi to the rook and in the meantime we do want to take out uh, black's best bishop, dark squared bishop. So it sounds like a good plan. What would happen after bishop c7? Would that be bishop f4? No, the idea here is to play bishop a3. Oh. That's, that's the trick. Oh, that's the trick. Okay, that's, that's the nice. Trick. Yeah, so black just doesn't really have time to get the bishop out. And look, at, like okay, so queen c7 happened. So now white cannot take on d6 because ideally what I want to do, I want to, you know, take on d6 and play queen a3. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but clearly this way the queen is hanging. So she played an uh, interesting move after queen c7. She played queen b2. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, original. Original. A very creative play from the players today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the bishop went back, but now bishop f4 comes to the tempo, queen b7 as well. <laughs> this is not something you see every day. When, yeah, this know. is the queen fianchetto that we are right. experiencing here. Well, what can I say? For white, at least the bishop is still out. Even if it didn't go to a3, it is on f4, it's, it feels good. Um, but uh, what about bishop on c8? Oh, this one is not, uh, it's not doing good. Yeah, the bishop on c8 is clearly worse than the bishop on f4, but, you know, what I was uh, telling uh, yesterday that uh, it's, um, it's a common mistake that people, people know that the bishop on c8 is a bad piece, but what people don't really realize is that the bishop on g2 is actually bad as well. All right, that is a good point. I've heard it uh, recently. Yeah, that is something that we do not really think of uh, at first, and it's true. And even if it's pinning like two pieces right now, queen and the rook, it actually doesn't do anything because there is this d4 barrier, d5, sorry, barrier yeah, for the bishop. Yeah, yeah. So these three pawns, they uh, restrict black's bishop, but they do the same, the same thing for the white bishop as well. But we still... I guess, you know, Soviet chess school tells us, you know, that the e5 square is weak, uh, the bishop is better than this one, and we can come to c1 quickly. So all this t should tell us that white should be better here. But, yes, absolutely. Uh, what I see, um, after what I can see that after bishop d6, uh, looks like, you know, knight e5, and then... Uh, we, instead of having a very nice uh, knight or a bishop on e5, now we have a pawn on e5, which is, it's more of a weakness, I think, in this position. So I'm not, uh, I'm not... Mm. Yeah, that is true, because the d5 pawn will, well, might be, uh, yeah, might move and uh, could be, uh, even in some lines could be a uh, pass pawn. Okay, it's not yet, but it's definitely an advantage uh, uh, in the center. This one we can see. Well, and the bishop on c8 has now the future on a6, so it sounds, uh, seems like uh, black um, uh, doesn't have any problem here anymore. Yeah, yeah, uh, she didn't, and uh, that's a good point, that now the bishop can actually come to a6, and I think this would be actually a better piece than the bishop on g2. So at yeah. least, you know, it attacks the pawn on g2 yeah, and definitely. it does something. Knight uh, f3, the knight is coming to g4. Well, still some play for white. This yeah, is yeah. interesting. It is, uh, I would say it's a um, like positional fight. 
Absolutely, and I don't like the move B4 because now uh, there's a outpost. very nice square on C4. Yeah, the outpost on C4, and that's what Black did. It's not like you know this bishop is attacking anything, but still, it's better to have the bishop on C4 than on A6. And so B4, you know, turns out to be like a necessary weakening move, I think. So we can conclude that Black is at least not worse here. Yeah, that is true. Even could slight could be slightly better. Yeah, I would definitely choose black here. Although you know, if we ever bring the knight of d4, e6 is also kind of weak. So I don't think white is in trouble or anything. But yeah. Right. Uh, so let us move on to the next mm -hmm. matchup. We have.